Hi, I'm Elon Lipton. I'm a development manager on the ASP.NET team at Microsoft. ASP.NET MVC 5 is the latest version of MVC and ships in Visual Studio 2013. MVC 5 was developed out in the open with suggestions and contributions from the community. In this video, I'll demo a few of the new features in MVC 5 that will help make your application development experience better and help you build awesome apps. I've loaded up Visual Studio 2013, and the first thing we're going to do is create a new ASP.NET MVC 5 project. The first thing you'll notice is that all the project templates in Visual Studio 2013 for the web have been consolidated into one single entry. Let's give this project a name, MVC 5 Demo. And now you get a dialog that might be familiar to MVC and Web API users, but is now joined forces with web forms and other project templates as well. There are a few new things in this project creation dialog. Not only do you have all the familiar templates that you've probably seen before, but within each template, there are new options and customizations that you can enable. For example, the MVC template now has checkboxes to add additional folders and core references for other systems such as web forms and web API. In addition to choosing which frameworks you want to use, you can also change what type of authentication the project template should have enabled. The different options include no authentication, which is probably not used too often, individual user accounts, which allows you to store your user accounts in a local database, as well as enable authentication from third-party services such as Facebook, Twitter, Google, and Microsoft accounts. You can also enable authentication for other OAuth and OpenID providers, if you wish. You can choose organizational accounts, which are based on Active Directory, and this supports capabilities both with on-premise Active Directory as well as cloud-based Active Directory on Windows Azure. And finally, it supports Windows authentication, which is used for intranet applications. For this video, we're going to use individual user accounts and enable Google authentication. Visual Studio is now creating a project and adding all the required NuGet packages that I need for this project. This includes authentication, frameworks, and styles. Another new thing you'll see in Visual Studio 2013 is the project welcome page. This includes steps and links for information on how to customize the application, how to deploy it to a hosting provider, and how to get more help. Before we jump into the code, let's just run the project and see what Visual Studio has created for me. While the project template on its surface isn't too different from what you've seen before, there are a number of subtleties that we'll go through as we go through this video. When I click login, we see that I can log in with a local user account, which I don't yet have, or I can try to log in using a third-party service. As I mentioned, I'll be using Google. To enable this, in my application start folder, there's a startup authentication file. Down at the bottom, I can uncomment this one line of code, recompile the application, refresh the login page, and instead of being required to create a new local account with a new username and new password, I can instead use a third-party service to do the login. So in this case, I click the, the Google button, enter my Google username and password, and when I sign in, Google wants to verify that I really want to give this site uh, permissions to use my credentials, so the site itself will not know my username or password. Now the website needs to know just a little bit more information about me, and it has already detected my first and last name and suggested a username for me. I'm happy with that username, so I'll go ahead and register with the site I just created. And here I am. We built an application with a slick layout, an authentication system, and a user management system. So in this user management page, I see my registered logins. I can add additional logins, such as a local login, or if I enable additional third-party providers, I can use those as well. Now that we can log into the site, we need to create a data model and create some controllers so that the users can do something interesting with the website. Into my models folder, I'll add a class. Let's call it product. And let's add a few properties to it. We'll add 
product ID property, that'll be the primary key, a string property for the product name, and let's say an integer property to count how many units are in stock. Compile the application, make sure I don't have any errors. In the controllers folder, I'll right click and run add controller. This is a new scaffolding experience that we've enabled in Visual Studio 2013. And again, while it has some similarities to what you may have seen before, there are a few new features. One is the new Web API OData controller. But even within some of the existing scaffolders that you've seen before, we've had, we have some new features. So I'll pick MVC5 with views and entity framework. Let's give this controller a name. Let's call it products. And here already you see a new feature, such as use async controller actions that will enable my application to potentially scale better and have better performance. I'll pick the model class that we just created, product. And in the data context, I'll, my application already has an existing data context. I'll use that. Visual Studio now is ensuring that my application has all the necessary requirements, including Entity Framework version 6, which has the new async data features, as well as any other required NuGet packages. And in the generator controller code, you can see the new asynchronous features of C-sharp, such as async and await, being used. Entity Framework 6 introduces new async variations of the methods you already know, such as toList async, and further down below, you see find async. In addition to creating the controller, MVC's scaffolding has also created views. So I can right-click on any action, click on go to view, and verify that Visual Studio and scaffolding have created my create, delete, details, edit, and index views. Because I've made a change to my database, I need to enable entity framework migrations. Entity Framework will detect the changes to my database schema and create the necessary code to update the database with the new schema. All I have to do is update my database, and now the database matches the new schema that includes the products table that we just created. Last thing I want to do to enable access to my products is go to the layout page and add a link to the new products page that we created. the text for the link, there's the action name, and there's the controller name, compile the application, navigate back to the home page of my app. Now we see the new products link we created, and when I click on it, we see the generated content from the scaffolder. I can click create new, add milk, maybe there are 50 units in stock, create some cookies, maybe 40 units in stock. And this was all generated for me by the MVC scaffolding feature. So now we have an application that includes authentication, including third-party providers, and includes a database with some create, read, update, and delete, or CRUD operations. So we have some functionality in the application, but we want to make it look a little bit nicer. For example, when I click on the details page, we see this URL, which it looks all right, product slash detail slash one, but we could make it a little bit better. Here I'm going to use a new feature introduced in MVC5 called attribute routing. Let's go back to the products controller. And right now the URLs for details look like this, but we're going to change them to look a little bit cooler, a little bit more modern, such as product details dash five. We introduced a new, fe a new attribute, it's called attribute routing, so you have attributes defining your routes. In this case, we want the URL to be uh, product details and then the ID. And to enable attribute routing, again, we go back to the app start folder, and there's a route config file, and there's a new method called map and we see attribute routes. I just add that call, and that will go scan all the controllers and actions for attribute routes. Go back to the page of the site, go to the product listing, and instead of products slash details, and then the ID, if I click on a details link, 
we now see that new vanity URL, product details dash one. Note that I didn't have to make any big changes to the routes in my application. All I had to do was add one attribute and add one method call to enable attribute routes. And you can add as many attributes as you want to your application. You can add them to controllers and to actions, and they will all get mapped automatically. Okay, so we have some URLs looking a little bit nicer, but I also want the styles to look a little bit nicer. So let's check something really cool out in these templates. These templates use a library called Bootstrap. You know, pay close attention to the menu at the top of the application. As I make the browser narrower, we see it start to change. And for example, the menu elements are now gone and hidden in this dynamic menu. Everything still works the same as before, but it's using a concept called adaptive rendering that's even changed the layout of the home page completely. We now see this vertical layout with getting started, more libraries and web hosting, but as I make the browser wider again, we see it changes to this horizontal layout. This allows your websites to work very easily on not only desktops and tablets that have much wider screens, but also on mobile devices that tend to have much narrower screens. But how can we make it look even nicer? Because it's using Bootstrap, if we take a look at the content of this application, the custom CSS file in this project, it's only about 40 lines. Everything else, such as all the dynamic layout, is all contained within Bootstrap itself. Now, earlier I went and downloaded a custom style, and you can find many custom styles available online for free. I'll add them to my application. When I go back to my page and refresh, we see that I maintain all the same layout as I had before, but with a new style. And because it's using Bootstrap, it maintains this adaptive rendering behavior. The last thing I want to show is another new feature in scaffolding. Now, we already have an MVC application that has a bunch of functionality in it, so it's no surprise that we can scaffold. But what you can now do is, even from an empty application or other existing application, all you have to do is create a folder Let's say models, add a class to it called product. We'll add pretty much the same properties as we did before. We've got the product ID, the name, and units in stock. Compile the application, make sure we didn't have any errors. We'll add a controllers folder. Well, of course, you can call it anything you want. I'll call it demo controllers. And just as I did before in an MVC application, I can now right-click Add Controller to any ASP.NET application. We'll select that same scaffold as we did before. Products controller. Pick the model. Now, in this case, we don't yet have a data context, so we'll create a new one. My demo context. I'm happy with all the rest of the default options. And now scaffolding will not only create the controllers and views, it will also add any necessary NuGet packages, such as MVC itself, as well as Bootstrap and other libraries, and create those all in my application with the required folder structure and anything else required. So we see it added all my configuration files, it added Bootstrap, a CSS file, created all the views, and now when we run it, we'll get one expected error because we don't have a home page in this application. But if I navigate to slash products, we'll see the same type of experience as we had before, and I can once again create milk, let's say with 60 units in stock, create that, and we have the same experience as we did before. I hope you check out these new features in ASP.NET MVC5 and try them out in your own applications. To find out more, go to www.asp.net slash MVC for documentation, tutorials, and videos. Thanks for watching.